It's time! Fight fans and degenerate gamblers, welcome to the Thick Boys Fight Club, where there are only two rules. Rule number one, always talk about Thick Boys Fight Club. Rule number two, talk about Thick Boys Fight Club, even if no one wants to talk about Thick Boys Fight Club. All right. We are back again, guys. Thick Boys Fight Club. I'm Nick. And I'm Ty Stewart. Let's rock and roll. Let's get Alrighty. right into it. Um, well, real quick, I just want to remind everyone we are having our drawing for either a Steepy Myochik or Daniel Cormier t-shirt, which we are going to draw the winner on, I believe it's Monday the 10th of August. Um, to enter, all you have to do is subscribe, uh, like, and comment. And you'll be entered one time. And for each additional time you do it, you'll be entered again. So you'll get multiple chances into it. So the more you like and comment, the more chances you get to win the shirt. We're going to priority mail it to you. And, you know, we'll just, when you win, we'll hit you up, get your size, and we'll send it right out. And your preference. Cool. Very cool. All right, guys. Uh, let's break down a little news. Uh, so pretty much what we got this week that happened is... Poor Irene Aldana and Holly Holm has been called off. Uh, we now find out the reason Aldana has tested positive for COVID-19. That's why she had to withdraw. Uh, news coming out of that, though, we have a new headliner for that fight card. And it was actually announced today by Dana White and Ronda Rousey on Instagram. It's kind of cool. It's going to be Derek Brunson versus Edmund Shabait. Am I, let me say this right. Shabaisen. <laughs> I believe that's how you okay. say it. I could be wrong. But yeah, um, and this Edmund kid, from what everyone's saying, this guy is like the future of MMA. So kind of looking forward to that. We'll have to see how that goes down. Uh, besides that, you know, right after that was announced, Mike Perry came out, started chirping. He said he calls for a rematch. He wants against Jeff Neal. He wants a, for the main event, he wants a five-rounder. And he says that he should have it because the UFC is letting anybody headline fights these days. So <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Good for that you, Perry. Great. That, that so, is a very uh, so there we go, guys. observation right there. <laughs> but yeah, didn't want to get too much into the news right now just because we already know this. This is a massive fight card this weekend. We got seven fights to break down. Let's yep. go ahead. Let's break it off. All right. Um, starting off in the welterweight division. We have Kazamat Chaimev, 7-0, and fighting Reyes McKee, 10-2-1. Um, Kazamat is going to come in as a minus $1,100 favorite, and McKee will be a plus $700 underdog. Uh, just real quick, Kazamat here will actually be fighting. It will be a second fight in 10 days, and if he wins, will be the, the first to do it to first to win two fights in the shortest span of time in the UFC. Um, just really quick, just to let you know, look, I get that McKee is a plus $700 underdog and some of you might be tempted to try throw some money on it. But let me tell you right now, you'd have a better chance burning that $20 and hoping someone gives you $20 back. Cause let me tell you this kid McKee, I swear to God, the only reason he accepted this fight is because the UFC said, look, take this fight, and we'll give you at least two or three more fights in the UFC. Guaranteed. This is his UFC debut. And we're talking about the guy people are already associating as the next Khabib Nag not Nurmaga Madoff. <laughs> okay, like I've watched this guy's tape. He is fucking ridiculous. He sticks on you like white on rice. He just takes you down and just beats the crap out of you. And you forget that you're even fighting. The only concern that the guys have it once they've been taken down is trying to get back to their feet only to be sucked right back down again. And in his last fight, he might have gotten punched one time and just literally beat the crap out of that dude. And the nastiest part was he, like Bisbing was saying, he was punching the guy with his exposed knuckles, the parts that aren't covered by the UFC gloves, and he was purposely hitting the guy with those parts just to cut the dude's face open. It was nasty. So just, just, just want to let you guys know, don't waste your time and your money on this fight. <laughs> you know, I feel you 100%. I do. Um, and my job here is to tell you, the fans, who's going to win the fight. 
yes, no doubt about it. Probably Chimev is going to win this fight. No doubt. But the gambler in me has to take the plus 700. Yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. But at the same time, we got to look at some other stats. We've said it time and time again on this show. When these guys do quick turnarounds, for whatever reason, it never seems to play out in their favor. Now, Unless they are the elite of the division fighting a bum. We said that. Yeah. And let me tell you, this, this kid is beat- already being associated as an elite talent, and he's fighting a kid who's never fought in the UFC before. Uh, His nickname is Skeletor, and it's not because he's intimidating. <laughs> it's because he's a skinny little 24-year-old kid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey man, like I said, you want to know who's probably gonna win? It's it's Chimev, but at plus seven hundred, I'll throw a hundred at it for fun, just to see. Good luck. Hey, hey man, do hey look, gotta guys, gamble. Sometimes. Do you? Some, <laughs> sometimes you want to gamble. I'm just telling you, I would put a hundred dollars on this if the kid could knock a guy out with one punch cold. He can't. If he was maybe a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and I, or a submission specialist and I believe won one of the takedowns, he could do a flying heel hook or something. But he can't. That's not what he does. The kid can rock you and then follow it up and beat and TKO you. But he's not a one-punch killer out there. So let me All ask right. you this. <laughs> what are you going to say to the fans if McKee wins this fight? I'll say absolutely nothing. I'll apologize for absolutely <laughs> fucking nothing. <laughs> okay. There we go. But yeah, as you guys, like I'm saying, you know, you want who's going to win? Yeah, obviously. There's a clear cut reason the dude's, what is he, minus 1100, you said? Minus 1100. There's a clear cut reason why he's that. There's no doubt about it. Dude's a bad motherfucker. But you know, hey, I, and you could be right about what you said. He took the fight just because the UFC promised him two or three fights. Maybe that is what happened. It very well could be. I mean, you have Chimev who also begged for a, another fight. So they obviously, the UFC was scattering to find someone. And they found McKee here out of, where is he? He's fighting out of Europe, you know, who's obviously close-er. And they found an opponent for him. So it does seem like it's a last minute put together match for sure. You know, like I'm just saying, guys, if you got money to waste, obviously, and you like to gamble, not that anyone has money to waste, but if you really like gambling, that's the gamble right there. For sure. That's a gamble. Yeah, that's a really UFC, big gamble. Anything can happen in the UFC. There's no doubt about yeah. that. We say that, and I'm the guy who bet money on um what was that girl's name we just bet on who fought Revis? She's not even the UFC anymore, pretty much. She's yeah. in the free agency. <laughs> Anyways, I put money on that. I was willing to do that. And she got worked. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not willing. To fucking not put willing. a dollar. Well, there you go. I'm not gonna put one dollar on this fight. There you go. All right. Well. All right. <laughs> next, next up, we have another welterweight bout featuring Alex the cat, the Brazilian cowboy Oliveira, twenty eight and one, coming in as a Ooh. minus one seventy favorite, fighting Peter Sobota, seventeen six and one, as a plus one fifty underdog. Nick, take it away. Well, I'll start with this. You know. We all love to count age and a factor in all these things. You got both these guys are in their early 30s. So I, I'm not going to consider age here at all. These are both older guys. So there's no doubt about that. You got Peter here who hasn't fought in two years. And the last time we saw him in the ring, he got knocked out. You know, TKO'd, whatever you want to call it. Oliveira definitely has been fading as of late. No doubt about that either. He's lost two out of his last three. I mean, or sorry, he's lost three out of his last four and getting a win in the last match, which kind of gave him a little boost of confidence there. So Bada here is on the last fight of his contract. And truly, I think this is going to be the last time we ever see him in the UFC. And for that reason, I'm going to have to go with it. I think he's going to have ring rust. I think I'm going with Oliveira here. Now, I don't think that's what I'm going with. Taking Oliveira, taking the Brazilian Cowboy. I just, I'm not seeing anything out of Peter that can convince me to bet against Cowboy. Okay. Um, I have to disagree with Nick here. (laughs) Alex Oliveira, don't get me wrong, man. The Brazilian Cowboy has pissed me off a lot. He's definitely lost me money because he has pulled off the upset multiple times on me. 
and just taking my monies from me. And it pisses me off all the time. He's a crafty veteran. He's predominantly a Muay Thai fighter. He likes to mostly be in the stand-up. Don't get me wrong. He still does have submissions. Uh, he's got solid ground and pound. His wrestling is above average. It's nothing like super impressive. He's not a stud or anything like that. Where Peter Sabota, this is actually his second stint in the UFC. Look, this guy has really turned his career around. Yes, he lost to um, Yves. It's Yves Edward, right? No, Leon Edwards, sorry. Leon, Leon Edwards. Edwards. He just lost, had a very competitive fight with him up until the last 30 seconds where he got rocked. And he was only, I think it was two seconds away from the bell being rung and the ref just called the fight. The ref could have honestly let it go the last two seconds. It wasn't that terrible where he was getting beaten so badly you had to stop it. I get the ref's looking out for his best interest. So I can't fault him there. But look, this guy is a submission specialist. He's got 10 submissions to his name. He's a Dan Lister black belt. That Dan Lister is one of the greatest submission wrestlers of all time. This guy is legit as fuck. All right. He's the ADCC gold medalist in the open weight division. And then on top of that, Peter Sobota here, he goes to Thailand to train his Muay Thai. He doesn't stay in Germany. He doesn't learn from some bum. He actually learned from a Muay Thai world champion. This kid is doing everything right to, exp um, to extend his career in this game. Um, on top of his submissions being super slick, he's dangerous off of his back. He's got some really good sweeps. And his stand-up from watching his fights has constantly been improving. And for that reason, honestly, I'm taking Peter Sabota here. I really got faith that he's going to win this one. Hasn't fought in two years. Hasn't fought in two years, but that's because of KO. A lot of guys will tell you the smart thing to do is to take the time, take a year off when you've been knocked out because of a concussion. You want your chin to heal up. That's a really smart move. Now, hopefully he has been training this whole time. Maybe he's reinvented himself or gotten a new game plan. Like I said, everything that he does from going to Thailand to learn Muay Thai and then being a Dean Lister black belt, he's doing everything right. And again, I don't know the name of his striking coach, all I know is that he is a world champion in Muay Thai. And he's been looking fantastic on his feet. And he's much more dangerous than Oliveira on the ground. He just has way more advantages. And it, to me, it's kind of, I thought he was going to be the favorite coming into this fight. Yeah, I think that's because you might want to go check your facts here a little bit. <laughs> um, this guy owns his own gym, and that's where he's in training out of. So yeah, I don't he know trains out of Germany. He is. Yeah. He don't get me wrong. He owns his own gym, but he employs his own coaches. I know. That's what I'm just him. saying. But he said in a statement that he's been putting all his energy into his own gym. So I don't think he's been going to these other places that you've been thinking that he's no, going to. He's definitely trained in Thailand multiple times for his fights, learning Muay Thai. Yeah, I don't no, need I'm to fact check that. that. <laughs> I'm not saying he did it this time, but this guy has been Got training it. Muay Thai in Thailand so multiple times. So he probably hasn't done it in over two years then. And that's what you want to bet on. That's all I'm getting at. Get, hey, be, be as salty as you want, Nick. I'm just telling you, when you lose this one and I look pretty with my extra 150, don't get mad, bro. I won't be mad. I won't be mad. All right. All right. Next up in the light heavyweight division, we have Paul Craig, 12, 4, and 1, coming as a minus 130 favorite fighting. Sorry if I mispronounced this name. That is just a hard God's one. God's Antigolov, 20 and 6 plus 110 favorite. Um, yeah, I guess I'll go first on this one. Um, so Antigolov is a master of sport in freestyle wrestling. His takedowns are on point. He is also a submission specialist. He's got 15 submissions to his name. He is coming off of a two-fight losing streak. And in that last fight, I was a little worried there because he really gassed out at the end of the first round which is a little scary just because if you're going to be a wrestler, you need to have insane cardio if you're going to shoot for takedowns as much as he does. And then in the striking department, he does tend to be quite reckless. Whereas Paul Craig, his striking has really gotten a lot better than when he started. He's also a submission specialist. He's got 11 um, submissions, one knockout of his 12 wins. So he's finished all of his wins. He's only got one decision fight, which was a draw to Shogun Hua, which he was actually starting to get the better of him on the feet, really evenly matched on the floor. And, you know, Shogun is a really solid black belt. 
I'm actually going to be taking Paul Craig here. I do know he's the favorite, but I'm feeling very confident that his cardio and his stand-up is going to be the difference in this fight. Yeah, I mean, as you said, last time we saw Paul here fight, it was a draw against Shogun. Um, and Antigolov has been knocked out in his last two fights in the first round. Paul Craig is going to be coming into this way bigger. He's got a reach advantage, and he's taller. Um, you know, now you got Craig, though, who hasn't really – if you look at his record and stats, he hasn't really knocked anyone out. So I don't know if that's going to be the way this one goes down. And yeah, I'm, it's hard. It's really hard to bet against a guy from Dagestan, obviously. That's like kind of what was holding me back. But after reading some things about Paul and how his training's been going, I, it appears that he's more focused than he ever has been wants to get a win he didn't like the fact that there was a draw against shogun he definitely thought he won that fight so for that reason as well i'm a, as well as well i am choosing paul craig here yeah good pick good pick <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> the other two are garbage bro. <laughs> um, i picked kazma to win <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up in the women's straw weight division, we have Carla Esparza, 17 and 6, coming as a plus 160 favorite, fighting Marina Rodriguez, 12 and 0, and 2 minus 170. Nick, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, you got Marina here, who is out of Brazil. So, first off, that's a green flag in my book. You know, Esparza, I think, watching her past fight, she's going to want to take this fight to the ground. Watching Marina's fights, Marina is like, hardly goes to her feet. And it's extremely hard to get her down to her feet. So I think that's going to be a problem for Carla. Um, you know, I think Rodriguez will be on the offense, basically, the whole time. And I think Esparza is going to be on the defense, is what it it's appears. Basically trying not to get kicked by this chick. It's, that's kind of the way I think this fight's going to be going down. So... For that reason, I got Rodriguez. Marina. Yeah, look, Car uh, Carla here is an NAI Division One wrestler. Um, that is a collegiate wrestling that's for smaller schools in particular. But she is a Division One in that. She's got some really good takedowns. She's predominantly a boxer. She's a little small for that division. She, I believe she's 5'1", where Marina's 5'6". So she does yeah. have the height going against her. But that can play to her advantage for the wrestling because she won't need to change levels as, as deep. But some of the um, things that I did notice that make me hesitant to bet on her is that she tends to shoot from really far out. It's very telegraphed. You can see it coming. You don't have to be that good to avoid those takedowns. Now, maybe she has been practicing not doing that, maybe working more from clinches to getting these takedowns. But saying that, Marina here, she's got some nasty Muay Thai, man. Her knees in the in the Thai clinch are, are gross. They just look like oh, – they're perfect. She's got some really great elbows as well. She uses her range very well. She's got some solid kicks. She works the legs, the body, the head. She just has such a clear advantage on the feet, and her takedown defense isn't great. It's above average, but I do think she's going to be able to wear Carla Esparza down. Maybe she gets taken down in the first round, but I do think she's going to start to work her at least in the second and the third round and take home a decision. She might, honestly, she could probably finish Carla in this round. This is one of those ones I'm thinking about taking the under in. Really? Yeah. Marina's, in a women's fight, too. That's in a women's that, fight, yeah. yeah. Her, it's, she just, just has such a clear advantage on the feet and has so many more tools that it's, I, if she starts to tee off, it's going to be a short night. Yeah, that's what I saw too. I mean, I was watching those kicks she used to, she kicked with too. I mean, those look deadly. Which yeah, no. I, I think that's going to give Carla a real problem for yeah, sure. She nasty. That's nasty. no doubt. Nasty. All right. Moving on to the heavyweight division. We got Fabricio Verdum, 23, 9, and 1, coming in as a plus 285 underdog, fighting Alexander Gustafsson, 18 and 6. Coming in as the minus 350 favorite, even though this is his heavyweight debut. Um, I'm going to take this off. Look, Gustafsson is an amateur boxing champion. He's got some great movement. You know, he's really light on his feet. He's great with his combos, his boxing. He does have some pretty solid kicks as well. 
he has insane cardio. The fact that he can go five rounds hard and you're not even going to question it. You're never worried about anything like that. And he only loses to the elite of the division. John Jones, Daniel Cormier, Anthony Johnson, um, Anthony Smith, as well as Phil Davis when he was still in the UFC. And he, don't get me wrong, that guy is fucking solid. Fabricio Verdum here has lost his past two fights. He's a two-time ADCC gold medalist, two-time world Brazilian jiu-jitsu gold medalist. And these are just his accomplishments at the black belt level. This doesn't include his purple belt, his blue belt, his brown belt competitions. Look, and on top of that, I really thought he won his last fight. And I thought he was winning the fight against Volkov before that. He did get caught in the fourth round, got dropped and finished. His cardio was playing a factor in the Volkov fight, where the Olenisk fight, I don't know. It was a split decision loss. I want to take those judges out to the back and put them down like old, old Yeller. But, you know, <laughs> that's just how I feel about it. Look, I got this – as I said last time, I just got this feeling in my plums. I believe Verdum has such a clear advantage on the ground. It's just ridiculous. And watching Gustafson get choked out by Anthony Smith, yeah, he got robbed. But if that dude's going to choke you out and Verdum is coming off of two losses, he said he did all of his training for that all in his fight online, no sparring whatsoever, and he almost won that fight and in my eyes did win that fight, I think for the plus 285, totally worth it. I'm taking Verdum in this one. Wow. So you're going to take the 42-year-old man. That's right. You know, plus 285, world, former world champion. Hey, I like the bet for sure. I do like the bet. But the guy's just simply getting old, man. He, I, put all that aside. I mean, Gustafson's moving up to heavyweight for a reason. I don't know. I, I, I can't see that at all happening, man. I, the only reason he's moving up to heavyweight is because he got his ass beat by every contender at light heavyweight. That is very true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. You have a point there. You do have a point. But I don't know. I, I think this is going to be a quick fight, to be honest with you. I think we're going to see a quick knockout here of Verdum. That's my call on that one. First round knockout, Gustafson. Yeah, if, if Verdum loses, that's honestly, that's the way I see it, is that Guff is going to knock him out, you know, with a nice three-piece and a soda in the third yeah. round. I, uh, <laughs> that's what I think is going to happen. All right, and moving on. Okay, um, in... The senior fight of the evening, we have the light in the light heavyweight. We have Mauricio Shogun Hua, 26, 11, and 1, um, fighting Rogerio Noguera, 23, and 9. And I am so sorry I did not write down the odds, but Nick, why don't you take this one away and I'll bring in the odds in a moment? Uh, okay, well, as we know, well, maybe you don't know, this is the third fight between these two guys. Um, it's been um, Shogun the first two. And honestly, I don't see it happening any differently the third time. I just can't see it. I don't think this is another um, Chuck Liddell versus Tito fight where all of a sudden, you know, the guy who's lost the first two are going to come out of it. Um, we have Shogun who still looks very excellent. As we said earlier, hard fought battle with Paul Craig. And, you know, it's not like – Shogun is a fading star by any imagination. Noguera here has been honestly thinking about retiring for some time now, and he has finally scheduled this to be his last fight. You know, that gives me a lot of doubt too. Uh, like I said, Shogun won the first two unanimously. I think we're not going to have any difference here. I see the same exact thing happening. Shogun. Yep, I'm going to agree with Nick here. Look, Rogerio Noguera, he's, you know, that the first fight was legendary over in Pride. Rewatching that was, you know, I really enjoyed rewatching that fight. It was great. The, the rules in Pride with the no elbows to the face on the ground, but you're allowed to knee, soccer kick, stomp them in the face, and getting to see Shogun trying to do all those things to Noguera was just, you know, it's – it was a little treat. You don't get to see that stuff anymore. And to have a reason to go back and watch it, I really enjoyed. Look, Rogerio Noguera, I think, has a slight advantage on the feet with his boxing. He does have real boxing credentials. He's a 
I believe he's won a couple tournaments in boxing in his native home of Brazil. He has, in a pure Brazilian jiu-jitsu sense, has the advantage. He's got a really great deep half guard, does tend to sweep people, uses it to get back to his feet. He does have, he is dangerous off of his back where Shogun is not so much. Shogun's just looking to stand back up. But the main difference is that Shogun's got that Muay Thai style. He really blasts those leg kicks. One of my favorite fights of all time was him versus Leon Machida the first time, which he won. Just some devastating leg kicks with that front lead leg inside kick followed by the roundhouse leg kick, just one after the other. A little whap whap was just a thing of beauty to see. He doesn't really do that anymore, but the guy is a – look, he's still a savage. He only loses to the best. Anthony Smith, OSP, Dan Henderson, and those are – of the only three guys that he's lost to in his life. I believe it's his last six or something yeah. like that. Um, what I really actually wanted to say about this fight and I thought would have been great is if we could have given both these guys a TRT exemption for this fight. Let them both come back to their fucking pride. Their oh pride, my God. Man. Just juice them up <laughs> to the fucking pits and let no. these guys go at it. <laughs> but we don't do that anymore. It's a bummer. It's a bummer. <laughs> but uh, that was just something I thought, but, yeah, realistically, look, Shogun does have the tendency to get rocked now. He has been through so much, taking a lot of damage. It is possible that Noguera can rock him, but putting Shogun away, it, that's a little tougher. Shogun's willing to take – when he gets hurt, he does take people down. He's he's very smart about it, where Noguera does tend to seem like when he gets rocked, he just keeps swinging and just kind of stays in there and doesn't really think about – he never really thinks about taking people down. He just uses his Brazilian jiu-jitsu as a, a defensive thing. If he gets taken down, he uses it. Otherwise, yeah. it's just there. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's All right. What you got, man. Yeah. It's Look, like Nick said, man, the, it, it, they've already fought twice. We've I had the same know. outcome two times. It, yes. We're not getting a different outcome. We're not outcome getting a different outcome. It, this isn't Rampage Jackson, Vanderlei Silva, yes. okay? <laughs> no, this isn't that. That's what I mean. This isn't Chuck Liddell and Tito. This is, <laughs> this is not even the same. We're not even talking about the same game, you know? They're yeah. in a different, different arena. Yeah. Um, and then for our main event of the evening in the middleweight division, we got Robert Whitaker, also known as Bobby Knuckles, 21 and 5, minus 130, fighting Darren the Vanilla Gorilla Till, 18, 2 and 1, coming in as a plus 110 underdog. Nick, why don't you start us off? What is Whitaker at, you said? Uh, minus 130. If you're still able to get it at minus 130, you don't not do that. You jump on there and you bet your fucking mortgage payment on that shit. I mean, I don't even really know what the fuck we're talking about when I'm watching. First off, Darren Till is a fucking clown. I'm going to come out and say it. <laughs> you know, you think... I, I'm actually shocked Darren Till had the balls to take this fight against Robert Whitaker. Truthfully. I mean, yeah, I give him credit. He comes out, oh, I don't want to fight certain people and all, blah, blah. You know, he, he knows that um, – I'm, I'm sorry, his name just – what's his name? Yo Time? Romero? Yes. The fact that he's scared, I'm not going to fight Yo Romero, I get it why you don't want to fight him. I don't want to fucking fight him either. <laughs> you know what the difference, though, is between me and you? You're a fucking professional UFC fighter, and it's your fucking job. So you don't really get to say that shit. I'm sorry. I don't accept that. You're in the same weight division. If he was to come up and you really did not take the fight, I'd call him a bitch. I really would. Not just because, like I said, you can tell me I'm a bitch because I don't want to fight him. 100%. I'm never going to fight that dude. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I'm just saying, my biggest, my biggest wager here on Whitaker is just the fact that we saw Jorge knock this dude out after he was already rocked. So you already know Jorge wasn't full cocked. That was a half of a, of a Jorge right there that knocked him out. What do you guys all think is going to happen when Whitaker throws one of his bombs at this dude? This dude's going to be flatlined by the end of round one. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. You want to bet for reals? The under on this fight I think is so solid. I don't, I'm sure it's going to be stupid money. 
I can't imagine what it's going to be. Do you happen to see that in front of you right now? Or um, it's not a, I can look it up real quick. Just give me a second. I mean, I would love to know. I, I mean, if they're giving you two and a half or something stupid, my God, jump all over that. I'm sure they're not. I'm sure it's probably going to be a one and a half is what I would assume. But I do know that these guys are going to come out banging and it's going to be an excellent fight. It really will be. Yeah, they don't have the um. They don't at have least Caesar's yet. Palace doesn't have. The yeah, well, usually don't give that out to the day of, so I can yeah. see that. But yeah, that's my pick. Not only that's my pick, that's my pick of the goddamn week right there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Barbara. I mean, I'm watching footage. I was like, what are we even talking about? What are we even talking about? Oh, the gorilla, my ass, dude, yeah. the gorilla. <laughs> Look, Darren Till here, watching his fights. I just can't help but walk away unimpressed look the guy yeah he beat Stephen Thompson he beat Kelvin Gastelum but neither of those fights I was like oh my god this is the future of the sport this guy is the number one contender this guy can be champ I don't see that it's like he lost to Tyrone Woodley Jorge Masvidal like Tyrone Woodley legitimately one of the greatest welterweights to do it Jorge Masvidal gatekeeper like a solid top gatekeeper, solid gatekeeper but he just knocked you the fuck out after being rocked want, after being after rocked, being rocked and you want to take on bobby knuckles a guy <laughs> yeah. who, who has fought, a nickname <laughs> yeah, yeah all- <laughs> guy who fought yoel romero for 10 rounds and given i don't think he won the second fight but he beat yo romero twice and hung in there and this guy throws bombs He's also the 2017 Australian national wrestling champ at 213 pounds. He qualified to represent Australia in the Commonwealth Games, which is all the countries that used to be colonies of the United Kingdom that did not secede, (laughs) okay? Not the United States because we chose to leave on our own free will. Everyone else kind of waited around, did their thing. But look, he got, he, that's how good at wrestling he is. And then Darren Till is just a Muay Thai fighter. He's large. He's a, very tall. He's good at using his range. He's patient. But so is Robert Whitaker. He's a very intelligent fighter. He, the one thing I think that's going to give him a clear advantage on the feet is the fact that he's a volume striker. He's always active. He's always throwing something. He's not waiting to see what you do. He's making you react, react to him. And that's what's going to that's what's gonna win him rounds. If this does go five rounds, he's going to win more rounds just solely based on the fact that he threw more punches. And on top of that, this dude can still knock you the fuck out. He's knocked two people out with head kicks. Not knocked out clean, but rocked them and then finished them off with punches. But that's still fucking impressive. And that's a lot more than Darren Till has. 100%. I mean, you can't even take away from the fact that not only did Jorge Masvidal knock you out, he knocked you out in front of your hometown. Yeah, and then I you mean, went to some some British Virgin Islands or something and stole a cab driver's car and yeah. wrecked a hotel room because you were emotionally distraught emotionally about distraught. the whole situation. Is that what he said? He was emotionally distraught about it? Well, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I don't know if he ever said that, but that's what I took from it. You lost two fights in a row. You go on a vacation with your boys to some isolated set of islands. You destroy your hotel room, legitimately steal a taxi cab from the guy who's going to take you to the airport. Wow. You stole the guy's fucking car. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as we're just saying, though, the fact that you're talking and saying you won't fight the guy, that your competitor, not only fought once, fought him twice. This guy's name is Bobby Knuckles for a reason, bro. <laughs> I think you have another one coming to you on Saturday night. I hate to say it. I think that silverback gorilla you think you are is going to be laying on his back, staring up at the ceiling within the first round. I truly think that. I think Robert's going to come in. He's going to make a statement. He's going to make this quick, you know, because Robert's got something to prove too on this fight. We can't remember, forget that. Yeah. Look, he's looking to get back into the title conversation and look, this is a good fight for him. 100%. 100%. If he starts to lose on his feet, his wrestling should be able to take that fight over, take him down, and work well, him. I think it's another thing to note is this is what's cr- amazing, too. When a dude calls a fight off and literally comes out and just says straight up, I'm not in the mindset to fight, 
and then tells you, okay, I'm ready to do this again. That means he's ready. You know what I mean? That wasn't, Oh, I was kind of forced to do that fight. Like he called the shots on this. So he's ready to rock for sure. Yeah. All right, guys. So very good. So we only got two disagreements tonight out of seven cards. So that's yeah. oh, good. And real quick. One of the disagreements <laughs> is my best bit of the week. Peter Sabota. just hey. a heads up. And I like that, you know, um, you know, I'm a little worried. I'll just tell you guys from, uh, I look at the odds and everything like that. I mean, I got basically all favorites here is what it came down to, which is scary to me. It's like, which one of these is going to be the underdogs, which hey, tie by very well might've picked them out of the batch, which ones they're going to be. He could have, or it's going to be the ones that we both are going to get wrong. So keep that in mind for you guys out there gambling on this stuff. But I think the ones that we both picked, um, and agreeance on are pretty solid to be honest with you yeah those Definitely. are all gonna be pretty safe picks i gotta be honest with you i can't believe that bobby knuckles is only a minus 130 i think there is tremendous value there tremendous oh uh, yeah absolutely that's look minus 130 look that's crazy. the guy that beat him is israel adesanya the guy yes. is a savant of of kickboxing and muay thai and that's the guy he lost to this guy's already being tagged as a future goat look Bobby Knuckles here we can go down a list of everyone he's beaten and on top of beating Yoel Romero on the first fight he did it on one knee after tearing his ACL in the first round exactly the, and then Darren Till I'm sorry I know there's a lot of fans of him out there but tell me like what was his most impressive fight and what was that guy's name because yeah the fights that I watch like I said I just can't help walk away and as uninspired we said, and unimpressed try and look at us and tell us that gastelum really means shit after last week tell me that well look kelvin <laughs> gastelum he won a split decision and i still think kelvin just underestimated him and didn't put his forth his best effort it wasn't an exciting fight by any stretch of the imagination it was a very lackluster at any if anything as we're saying all right guys well I think we said enough for tonight. Um, you got anything else you want to add to this whole shindig here? Nope. Just remember to hit the like and comment to enter yourselves in that raffle for that shirt, guys. Yes, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Please, though, comment in the comments. We need some, you know, you guys want to argue about something or you got something you want us to bring up, by all means, comment. We'll bring it up. Yeah. If you want to target one of us and tell us we had a terrible pick, and feel free. Just tell us we suck and we don't know what we're talking about. And we'll be happy to trash you in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much once again. It's tons of fun. Thank you, Ty. Yep. For the education. You too, Nick. Until we'll next time, man. So we'll be back with you guys on Sunday. Or probably Sunday, I would think, right? Yeah, Sunday. Sunday yep. night. We'll be back with a recap show of this weekend's card on Sunday. Big fight card, though, guys. You got 14 fights, you guys, to watch this weekend. It's going to be a blowout of Fight Island. And there we go. Until next time. Yeah, man. It's going to be a fun card to watch. For sure. All right. Peace. Peace.